if we talk about images, of course, they are very important because we live in a very complex world and simplified national images help us, help us to navigate. And uh, the problem is that these images, they are often deviate, and this is diff significantly. So this is especially the case with China because China has been risen very strongly and uh, people have a different uh, view of China today than it has in the past. And uh, what is important in looking at perception is that views are driven by one's political values and beliefs, we have to think about that, and knowledge about culture, tradition, and language are very important as well. And you, the media, of course, play a very important role in shaping public opinion, but not only the media, but also policymakers and academics have a strong influence on the images. And uh, these image theories and perception studies focus on the relationship between projecting and perceiving countries. So why are these national images so important? Because they create the international reputation of a country. Uh, this is, for example, in economics, very widespread, that if you have a bad national index, maybe your products will not be sold very well on the foreign market. So you have to care about your national image. Or in political science, of course, uh, there's a national image and the international environment, and then, if we a quote here from the image theory, we assign images to other actors that mirror our perception of these actors. And uh, here, another quotation from image theory and stereotypes. Images are beliefs about the character, intention, motives, and emotions associated with the out group. So it's not the reality, it's our perception of the other. And uh, we have a strong gap between China's self-image and external images of China. So here on the left side, Zhang He, uh, a symbol of peaceful rise, and on the other side you have the image of the copycats, the panda who takes away our technology, or the dragon who eats up our companies and uh, our uh, products. And, of course, the media have a very strong influence because the China threat stories, they are very best sellers, like here, The Economist or The Spiegel are an example of this threat theory. Now I come back to the Huawei study. We had a number of partners. It is TNS uh, MNET, uh, you might know it. It's a re market research institute, and their responsibility was a conception on the survey execution. So they did all the interviews, 2,600 interviews. I come to the, uh, this fact uh, in a few minutes. We had then a media analysis institute, Ausschnitt. Uh, they did a quantitative analysis of content. And we, are Giga, we did the conception of the survey, the questionnaire, and the media analysis. Uh, we had a survey um, also on um, other things and put it together and uh, supplied some background information. And uh, my colleague, Nele Nösselt, who in 2016 went to Duisburg University. She joined us as well, so we have University of Duisburg there on the, on the bottom of this list. So just a few words about the survey design. It's based on telephone interview random sample. The sample size is 1,300 in each country. On the bottom you see uh, the kind of groups. Um, on the left side you see the population, we had in each country about 1,000 of this group, 1,000 people, and then the second is the economic, uh, no, the political decision makers, 100 in each country, and 2,000 economic decision makers. So altogether, 1,300 in each country. The survey period was September 2015, and we had a questionnaire, very complex, with five parts. We first asked about spontaneous associations, like what you did this morning, or when you arrived, you wrote your association you have when thinking of a country. And uh, we had that spontaneous association, uh, a part on politics and economy and innovation, culture and society, and some social demographics. And at the la in the last uh, book, we had a 
in part on digitalization. So these three focus groups uh, we had, and then media analysis, quantitative analysis. Selection period uh, was uh, 14 to um, 15. And we had the inclusion criteria like China, Chinese or German, uh, Germany, and also random sample size. And we looked at key articles uh, with specific tops and frames. Um, the details of the study you can find in the publication. So let's come to the results. Um, um, the book itself has a number of very nice graphs and uh, tables, uh, which is too difficult here to uh, show. I just um, found the most important um, difference between the uh, Chinese and the German perception. So uh, for both countries, the economic power is the most important uh, association. So uh, Germans uh, think that uh, economic power, 34% uh, of the Germans think that uh, China is a very strong economy, and 60% uh, uh, of the Chinese interviewed uh, were thinking the same. Uh, maybe another one, like when uh, Chinese think of Germany, then they think of automobiles, maybe Mercedes or another famous uh, brand. We think about human rights violation, <laughs> so it's a different <laughs> uh, dimension. Uh, we think about the Great Wall, communism, Chinese food, 12% uh, each. Uh, what the Chinese think of our technology? And uh, Chinese think about German traits, maybe discipline or other optimal <laughs> or positive <laughs> images. We think about Chinese as being copycats. Uh, the Chinese think about beer and football when they're thinking about Germany. So it's very different. Uh, now let's come to the politics and the state. Uh, this part, uh, it shows that there is a strongest difference in the perception. We think that the system, the political system, on a scale from one to five, one is positively, um, for example, uh, agreed or fully agreed. Five is negatively or not agree at all. So on this scale of one to five, uh, we think that the system, the political system, is not very good. So we give them 4.4. So um, this is a bad image of the political system. While the Chinese assess our system, view our system as quite good. The same holds true with human right protection. We think human right protection is almost bad, the best, the worst on this scale. It's almost five, the point five. While we think, while Chinese think, our human right protection is very good. Here you see, again, I have to stress, the strongest difference in the perception between uh, Germans and Chinese. Now here, um, freedom of expression, it shows right the same thing. So we think that uh, there is no freedom of expression, almost no freedom of expressions, and almost uh, five uh, point on the scale of one to five, while the Chinese think the other way around. 85% uh, of the Germans think that uh, you have a very strong censorship in the internet. We think that of Chinese. Uh, and freedom of access to the internet is also not very good. Um, the next part was on uh, economy and innovation, and here the picture is completely different. Um, as not also completely, but here uh, some of these things uh, uh, are not reality, it's their perception, but here uh, mass production. 85% um, of the Germans think that um, China is mostly famous for its mass production. Um, most, uh, most of these uh, points come from the economic decision maker. 90% of the economic decision makers in Germany think that mass production is a basic production in China. Um, and then there's um, some variation. There was a question both for mass production as well as for innovative products. So. Um, we have here 9% of the population think also maybe there is some innovation in the product. So uh, if you put that together, we think the Chinese products are not innovative at all. But uh, then, <laughs> again, there is uh, the question, um, are Chinese uh, or German technology products competitive? And here the picture changes, because the German population, 64%, thinks, yes, there is compatible. So they can produce high-tech products, 
83% uh, think that they can produce high-tech products. Although <laughs> the, the question before was if there are uh, only mass production. So if you have high-tech products and are able to do that, it doesn't fit together, I think. So um, if you uh, compare this to um, assessment, it's uh, quite uh, different. Now let's look at society and culture. And uh, here, um, one um, uh, is the um, characteristic traits, like are people flexible and pragmatic? And 57% uh, of the Germans think, yes, uh, Chinese are uh, quite flexible and pragmatic, and Chinese think the same of us, which is true or not, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, are Chinese peaceful, are German peaceful people? Um, it's uh, for 57% of the um, Germans, uh, they think Chinese are peaceful. And more, even more, Chinese 68% uh, think the same of us. But here now there's a difference. Openness to new technology. 90% uh, of the Germans think yes, uh, Chinese are very open to technology and I think it's true. If I think about your uh, approach to digitalization and uh, uh, Alipay and uh, all these new uh, things you have developed over time, so they are very open, but Chinese think no, only to uh, an extent of 72% are, we are open to um, uh, new technology. And um, uh, if you look at this question, uh, the group of economic decision makers, and I think this is really reflecting reality, uh, the companies uh, involved in China, um, uh, trade and uh, investment, 95%, almost all of them, think Chinese are, new to, uh, are open to new technology. And this is a very important statement or important perception. It's, an, it's not the reality. Uh, here, another point, it's very interesting, educational system. How the Chinese view the educational system. Um, uh, they think 81% think that our uh, educational system is internationally competitive. I don't think that the Germans think that of our system. Uh, but uh, the Germans think that only 54% 54% um, of the Germans think that uh, the Chinese educational system is competitive. So here, another point which is different, uh, Chinese are very willing to study and work abroad, and 84% um, uh, of the German population thinks that, while only 57% of the Germans think that of us. So if we summarize uh, the results of the Huawei studies, and there are much more information and uh, um, aspects in this uh, 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 book, um, we can find that both Germans and Chinese have a positive image of each other with regard to the strengths of their economies. So they are interested in each other because of economic reasons, first of all. Uh, but then, due to the strong difference in the political system, China's image in Germany is not as good as expected, given the close economic relationship. Um, and although half of the population interviewed in Germany and China perceive the other culture as strange, more Chinese than Germans view the other culture as positive. This is also interesting. We are more uh, reluctant when it comes to the Chinese culture. German and Chinese perceive the opportunities and challenges related to digitalization as being very different. And here you can have a closer look at the uh, book we compiled for that. Now let's uh, try to um, finish this uh, short presentation um, with this uh, slide. So uh, putting that together, we have different patterns of belief and this produced different images. Um, we have a very simplification of this uh, context. We say there are ally, um, ally images, uh, other actor states are perceived as trustworthy, cooperative and democratic. If we have the compatible goals, equal power capabilities, equal cultural standards, then of course this is an ally, so it's a partner of us. If this is not the case, of course it's an enemy. So we have these two <laughs> Uh, division between ally and uh, enemy image. And the problem with enemy images is that behind that is a threat perception. And this can, of course, trigger security dilemmas. And what we need then, mutual distrust, 
uh, we have then mutual distrust and uncertainties. And I think you media representatives are a very important, play a very important role in just um, overcoming this mutual distrust and uncertainty by providing information on China, which is not black and white, but uh, which is uh, very well-based, empirical, founded and sound. Thank you very much.